Okay, so now let's zoom out a bit and look at our community as a whole, or maybe what we do in our community. Um, Karin Lammers will, uh, she, she's from, uh, no, she's the founder of Perspective 2. Actually, today I've learned that um, founding this company was partially based on ideas collected here at the Riot Summit, so we were an inspiration somehow. Um, I like that. Um, yeah, she will talk about uh, governance and open source software projects and how to make decisions. So uh, go ahead. Thank you very much. Am I hearable enough? Okay. So, how do you make decisions? That's what I asked last year during the General Member Assembly. And it caused quite some bits of discussion. Um, it was, the, the, there was some improvement possible. So, I dived into the topic. Ah, okay. Well, for those online, the slide is just the title slide now. Um, I will take you with me in how do you do governance in open source software projects? Yes. How do I go to the next? Um, about me, I'm Karin. I'm a contributor for Riot since two years. Um, I have a background in public administration and in education. And I want to help bridge between the non-technical and the free and open source software world. So, as already said, I founded a company called Perspective2. And I help FOSS projects improving their um, community processes. So governance, but also onboarding and developing learning materials. Why am I giving this talk? Well, you want to write code. And if you have clear community roles and rules, you can spend as little time as possible on process management. And you're able to focus on the core activities and write code to do cool stuff. So, um, I will first take you with me on the definition of governance, then why it's important, how to do, what to do, and some practical recommendations for Riot. Governance is, in the public administration field, a very broadly studied subject. Um, it's any activity or process of deliberately using power in order to coordinate sizable groups of people's performances to bring about desirable aggregate results and avoidance of risks and undesirable outcomes. Long, long definition. You have a group of people, you want to get to results, you need to coordinate, and in order to coordinate, you have to use power. That can be one person that um, uses power, it can be a group of persons, or a community that wants to use the power to coordinate themselves. In open source software, it's handy to know um, licenses versus governance model. Open source licenses provide the legal framework within which parties collaborate. collaborate. The governance model provides the social framework for that collaboration. But what I would like you to remember, if you would want to remember something from this presentation, governance is the rules and the roles. The rules of the game and the roles in that game. So why governance? You see two boats there. They're both boats. You both use them to go over water. But you have to choose what boat you're going to use, because you're not always using a rescue boat or a canoe. You have to think about what is your destination? With whom are you going there? How do you decide on your direction? What tools do you have to steer through that direction? And how do you resolve problems? If you are a rescuer, your destination may be someone who's drowning in sea. You're going together with a team of, professional team of rescuers. You decide on your direction with a technical system that tells you how to go there as handy as possible. You have a motor, you have an electrical system and knowledge and experience on how to steer and, and also physical um, steer, steering wheel. Um, and if there are any pro problems, you have a captain who takes decisions and the rest follows. 
But if you're going on a lovely holiday somewhere here in the mountains in Austria, um, you, you want to check out a beautiful lake together with your friend with whom you're on holiday. Where to go, how you decide? Well, you just discuss and you decide it together with consensus. What tools do you have to steer? A, a pedal. And, and, and yeah, well, you're physical and it depends on how good you are with handling that pedal, but you can, everyone can use it. You resolve problems, probably on the fly, if they occur. So, what boat do you need? In open source software projects, it's very important to also answer these questions, because if you have clear governance, clear answers on these questions, that's the basis for a well-functioning project, for well-functioning, working together, being able to get things done that you want to get done. How to do that? Define your goal. Where are you heading? What problems are you solving? In case of Riot, why, did, why does Riot exist? Where do we want to go? What, what in five years, what do we want to be at? Define your rules. So, organizational structures, what is already existing? What do you want? And also the rules. Um, rules are defined as um, action and interaction patterns of actors. An actor is a person or a group of persons. What do they do and how do they interact? In open source software, the, the practical uh, way of doing that is choosing a governance model. Um, there are several governance models used. These are five often used. Uh, founder leader model, also sometimes called benevolent dictator. It's one person taking the, um, the end decisions. There are uh, boards or councils, either self-appointed or elected. Self-appointed would be a group says, okay, we're gonna get a board, you're good at that, you're good at that, and you're good at that, you're gonna be in a board, let's do this. Elected is with official uh, elections, with voting, just as political elections. There is a duocracy model, that is the person that does most, or the persons that do most in a specific feature area, for example, they take decisions in that area. Uh, similar, but a little bit different is the meritocracy. That's about the knowledge you have. If you are the expert, you have the most knowledge in a certain area, you or the people, uh, the group of people that have most knowledge about that area, take decisions. Often, models are mixed in. For example, Ubuntu. That's visible on the picture. Um, it has a mix of founder leader, meritocracy, Chrissy and a board model. Uh, Mark Shuttleworth is the founder leader. He is taking the, the end decisions, if necessary, only practiced if it really cannot be done differently. Then underneath there's a community council and a technical board. So that's the board model. And they claim on the website we have a meritocracy. Don't know exactly how they do that, how they combine it, because I looked up the, what they put on their websites. I do not know the projects from the inside, so if you have more knowledge about it, I would like to hear more afterwards with the questions. Um, Django Project works with Electric Council, and they have really clear roles described on the websites. Quite nice. Django has the project, which is mostly done by volunteers, and they have a foundation with the legal entity. Um, Two other models that I didn't mention is the foundation-backed or the business-backed. I think that's not applicable for Riot, but those are also models if you have a foundation or a company behind the project that also has, um, can, can be put as governance model. Python has a steering committee model, and Linux is a mix of founder, leader, and duocracy. And what is important with this description of the governance model and what I think those projects have done quite well is a clear description of this decision-making uh, process shared openly with the community. Um, so, recommendations for Riot. Describe the current governance. What is the current goal? What are the current rules? What are the current roles? For example, in Riot there are users, contributors, maintainers. We already have three different kinds of roles. 
rules, if you want to put in a new feature, you have to make commits, make it into PR, people review it, and maintainers mostly. Well, you know how it works, you're better in explaining it than me. I'm, I'm still learning that whole process, but there are rules on how to uh, put new software features or documentation or whatever in this project. Write them down. Write them down, set up a governance.md document. That's one of the main ways many, well many, there are not many projects that have their governance explicitly, but I can really recommend it because it really helps in clearness. And then you write this down in a governance.md document, put it in the main repository so that everyone can see it. And from there, improve iteratively. Iterat iteratively. What organizational structures do you want? Uh, do you want a different governance model? Do you want to add roles? For example, this morning during a breakout session about um, tutorials and documentation, that has been spoken about maybe we need a group of people who focus on documentation. That's maybe a new role to introduce. Don't know if it's a good idea or not, but that's an example that can be done. And there are already some tools available, such as uh, a governance readiness checklist from Sustain OSS. They have a whole list of questions you can just go through and answer to know, okay, where are we about? What, what kind of governance model do we have, do we want? CNCF has a template or templates for a governance.md document. And Community Role have a, has a governance toolkit. They have uh, some governance models explained, seen like how are decisions made, what roles are in there, and um, well, how to use it. So that's what I recommend. I have no concrete go use this model or that model, because there are a lot of things already existing. So what I recommend is get that together, get it like up above the surface, write it down, and improve from there, because there is already a governance model, it's just not written down. And see what goes well. There's a good pace. Be proud of what you have achieved so far. We're here with a big group of people. The project exists for, what is it, 10 years. There is so much going well. Be proud of it and let's improve from there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karin. Oh, there's the first question already. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, nice talk. Um, and uh, my question is like, you have seen how we do governments. It's like um, a rough consensus thingy that we have going on. Have you seen that somewhere else? Does that have a name or something? Uh, well, I've seen it at, at ICF, right? The grassroots community. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen it when like really looking into governance models, no. But um, I have mostly looked into governance in general and I'm not so home yet in specific those models used in OpSource, as in, I haven't seen it yet, no. But maybe other people have? No? Um, that's uh, actually piling up on, on that, um, like the IETF model probably would be quite interesting to look at, uh, um, not because it's obviously a 100% match, but more because it's, it's quite well documented in the meanwhile. Can you speak up a little bit? The, Thanks. Uh, the ITF model is uh, quite well documented, so that could be a good uh, uh, l sort of background reading, I could imagine. It's probably not a 100% fit because the organization is so large and has a lot of baggage that came over time. People went a little bit overboard on the process. Uh, so when some people figured out that, oh, actually I could focus on developing processes, so they did. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I have not seen those um, resources, so I'm, I'm eager to look at them. Uh, but I've myself been involved in some of the organizations in, in, in the boards of those organizations, so uh, that's indeed uh, interesting. It is, uh, I agree with you, it's very valuable to document uh, the processes and everything because uh, specifically for newcomers, there is um, 
it's easier to get up to speed on, on what to do and what not to do um, and to be successful in an organization um, because otherwise it's buried in everyone's knowledge, sort of. Yeah, yeah indeed. And um, governance model is, is describing those rules and roles and you also have the contributing document uh, describing how to contribute also often uh, like some roles in Riot are already described there and I would also recommend to add a contribution letter so how what is like the career letter how to come from a contributor to a maintainer for example I've no idea if I want to be a maintainer how to get there and if there is a maintainer who's not active anymore how to put that person back to contributing level. So that's indeed for newcomers clear like how the community works. So otherwise it goes a bit under the surface and things get fuzzy. Doesn't help the process. No, I was first. <laughs> Definitely. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, I, uh, just on the ITF stuff and research of governance, I know that there are people researching the ITF governance model, so maybe there is some literature already out there. Nice. Um, did you check? Uh, make first your note. Yes. Um, so, I, um, did you check what is already written or documented uh, in the right ecosystem? I mean, we have, for example, the contributing MD. So, regarding the question how to contribute, Can it you, should be this. Sorry, cannot, yeah, so, thanks. again, the um, uh, question is whether you checked uh, the stuff that is already documented. Um, for example, we have the uh, contributing MD that describes how to contribute. So, if you're wondering how to do it, it should mm -hmm. be described there. There's an explicit page about community processes where the roles of maintainers and contributors and task force and this and that are described. They are maybe not documented in the file that is called governance, um, but I would say that a lot of things that you brought up are written down already. And my question is, did you check what is missed? And yeah, I did. And indeed, that's very good. There is already a lot available. And what I recommend is to structure it like the rules and the roles in general, process-wise, put it in a governance document and contributing, uh, put there how to contribute, how that whole process works, uh, so that you have it um, like clear, divided, general process, and also the goal, the script. The, you have the goal, vision, mission, governance, rules and roles, and contributing the practical uh, uh, implementation of that. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Then let's thank Karen again.